Hey there, we're Tali and Ophira Adut, identical twins and astrologers. Welcome to Astro Twins Radio, where we bring the stars down to Earth. Hello, friends. It's the week of August 5th through 11th, 2024. This is Ophi, flying solo today for the week. Um, it's the week. It's the week that Mercury turns retrograde. Womp, womp. I know we've been telling you it was coming, and it is, but it's also an amazing week. We've got the Lion's Gate portal opening up on 8-8. We're going to get into that and get you retrograde proofed to the best of our ability today. So let's start with that. We are just pole vaulting out of the Leo new moon that was on Sunday, August 4th. So um, that was a powerful opening and new moons propel us forward. But, you know, sadly, Mercury retrograde is kind of like pumping the brakes a little bit, or at least, you know, telling us slow down. You had all these big, exciting, passionate ideas and moments, but now you need to process them a little bit. So Mercury is retrograde, Gatorade, Haterade, whatever variation on it you want to use from August 5th to 28th. So most of the rest of the month. And um, it's going to split its time between Virgo and Leo. So until the 14th, it's in Virgo. And it's the ruler of Virgo, Mercury is. So this is a really good time to edit and revise and refine and, and go back. If you have an unfinished project, who doesn't these days? Really good time to blow the dust off of it, tweak it, and polish it. We could get caught up in some analysis paralysis during this time because if my my imagery for Mercury retrograde is always like wheels that just keep on spinning but not going anywhere. So there's always a danger of your brain <laughs> turning into that and, you know, you getting into analysis paralysis, especially with Virgo or overly critical and perfectionistic and all of those kind of editing and revising gone awry, gone too far. Like it's great to polish things up and wait, but there's a point where done is better than perfect. And we're going to have a little bit of a hard time sorting out where that is. So when in doubt, wait it out, I say with Mercury retrograde, but um, you can't always wait. So if you're someone who's newer to astrology, Mercury is a planet of communication, technology, travel, and transportation. And three to four times a year, it passes the earth and their journeys around the sun and does that kind of optical illusion from our vantage point on earth, where if you've ever been in a vehicle or on a train and you passed another one going at a different speed, it would look like one was going backwards, but it really isn't. It's just the illusion that happens when you're passing. So uh, Mercury's things that it, it rules appear to go backwards and haywire during the retrograde. So we have, you know, planes delayed and travel plans get messed up and people misunderstand each other. And it's kind of modern life. I mean, it feels like with the airports and all the flight delays that I've experienced this year that Mercury is always retrograde. So I don't even know if it could possibly get any worse from what I've heard from people. But Nonetheless, if you are traveling, make sure you download some audiobooks, maybe a whole season of your favorite show, just in case you find yourself stuck at the airport. I mean, Mercury's shadow period, which is right before, uh, right, it's, it's, a, it's a few days, a few weeks before we start to feel the effects of its stationing, as it's called in astro jargon. And you know, the crowd strike IT outage happened right at the beginning of that shadow period, the retro shade, and um, that was kind of an early indicator. So maybe <laughs> maybe it can't get worse than that. Uh, but just for precautions, prevention is always your friend. Just back up your data, back up your devices, watch what you put into those group texts, save those vacation photos to the cloud, make sure that you are preserving anything you want. So August 5th through 14th, we've got Mercury in Virgo. And then on the 14th, it backs into Leo for the rest of the retrograde, which is until the 28th. So 
little drama, a little histrionics. We may see, you know, the final answer of what Benefer, they're both Leos, J-Lo and Ben Affleck, where they end up, especially at that full moon on August 19th. If you haven't listened to the monthly podcast, the monthly cheat sheet, we talk about that. That's a really big day where there's a lot of cosmic traffic, so as well as the Demo Democratic National Convention starting that day too. So this is all under Mercury retrograde in Leo. So we can definitely expect that those political ads and mudslinging are going to be dialed up probably starting this week. So, you know, one of the most unfortunate things I think about our society now, which we do our best to combat with astrology. Because I think astrology is the only place where differences are usually celebrated and okay. <laughs> it's like the only safe space to not be exactly like someone else or to be polarized by your differences. I mean, some people use it for that, uh, but we don't. But, um, you know, I think that there's going to, there's, there's unfortunately a lot of contempt happening uh, between different factions. And while it's understandable, I suppose, intellectually, it's, it's not helpful. It, it divides us even more. And I think during Mercury retrograde, there's going to be a lot of contemptuous statements going around as we choose our sides and align with whose quote unquote team we're on. So it's a very team summer team, you know, the Olympics, politics, elections. So I'm going to encourage our high vibe light worker listeners here to push yourself and get creative and see if you can express your preferences, opinions, alliances without contempt, without dividing, without making it about sides, but just that you have your preferences and that's okay. You know, I, it's, it's, we, you know, you're going to have people want, you know, we've, we've already been through this with the 2016 elections where families were torn apart by people's choices. And I'm not minimizing that because it's hurtful when someone aligns with someone who's beliefs or opinions or policies invalidate your very being or your rights. So the problem is that we're all walking around feeling that way. So during Mercury retrograde, I'm just advising that you find an outlet to express your feelings, but be careful what you post publicly, you know, the company you keep just it's it's it can have greater repercussions and you you choose ultimately if it's if you if silencing yourself feels like too high a price to pay please don't do that just stretch yourself to see if you can do it without invalidating another human being even if you don't like their beliefs and policies and behaviors and choices so criticize those not the person all right i'm going retrograde here so one good day to pass an olive branch is going to be this Wednesday, August 7th, when Mercury meets up with Venus. They're both in Virgo. And Venus is the cosmic diplomat, the peacemaker, the, the harmonizer. So if you do have something to say, if you do want to say, hey, you know, when you shared that, I felt hurt because, you know, I personally feel this way. A one on one conversation where you could reach a greater understanding with someone, definitely a good day to do that. Venus is also beauty and love and relationships and romance. So we may be hearing from some exes uh, midweek or really all week long. So don't be surprised if an old friend or love comes back. It's a great week for vintage style too. Uh, retrograde turns us back to the past and... Um, so it's a really good time to shop your closet or go back to another era. We're going to be dropping an exciting announcement um, about something we're doing. If you're going to be in the Hamptons next, um, around August 15th, details to come. But we are going to be doing something really fun with the Decades Balmain uh, 
traveling exhibit and uh, curated collection on Shelter Island. And we would love to invite you to that. So stay tuned. We'll be sharing about that when it happens. Uh, this week, if you're not on our mailing list, make sure you are and follow us on Instagram at Astro Twins because we would love to hang out with you and celebrate uh, some vintage styles and caftans under the stars. Had to dangle that, that one. And before that, we would love to be together with you on 8-8. So that is the Day of the Lion's Gate. Going to tell you what that means. We're doing a special ritual and workshop to celebrate our book, The Astrology Advantage, which is out later this month. And your ticket to this gives you a copy of it. You're going to be guaranteed to get one of the first copies that goes out. And we're doing a special workshop to rewrite the rules of success because that's what 8-8 is all about. So on August 8th, uh, we celebrate the alignment, the yearly alignment of Sirius, which is the brightest star in the sky, also known as the spiritual sun. Lots of connections to ancient Egypt there. Orion, the three stars of, of Orion's belt, are magical stars, also known as the three sisters, and the earth and the sun. So it's this Leo season, heart opening portal. When you, you know, we're, we, we spend so much time making goals from our head. I would say like 1-1 one, one is a new year for your goals, 8-8, eight, eight, new year for our souls, because we're very much in our heads on January 1st during Capricorn season, thinking about and engineering how to get from point A to B to C in this very linear way. It's important. It's important to set goals and intentions. But as we know, sometimes the quantum field, the 5D world, has another timeline that it that it follows that isn't always in sync with that of our 3D material world. So on August 8th, we're kind of not quite three quarters of the, of the way through the year, a little bit over halfway through the year, and we get to tune in and calibrate our goals and intentions and dreams and desires with those of our highest purpose. So the spiritual sun illuminates that for us on 8-8. Eight, eight. little fun fact on, um, on January 1st, midnight on New Year's Eve, Sirius is at a you know, becomes visible at midnight. So it actually is correlated to the January 1st new year. Very interesting. Um, but it's a, it's a special constellation that the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, were very connected to with the Great Pyramids. And we're going to make our own pyramids. We're going to make our own modern day pyramids. Um, we're going to use that our, our pyramid, our triangle, the I am system that is part of the book, The Astrology Advantage. And we're going to go through the new rules of success in the new world, how can you have success that does not uh, leave your heart and soul out of it? That is only, you know, that's not just about striving and hustling and working hard, but allowing and inviting. So I'm going to drop the link to that in the show notes. If you don't have your ticket yet, we have a limited number because it's going to be on Zoom, but you're going to get a chance to win a trip to San Francisco to meet us, hang out with us, get your chart read. One person's going to do that. We're going to have eight other people entered into a drawing for some beautiful prizes from our friends uh, at Moroccan Elixir, Kate Somerville, and Olivine Atelier. So if you love skincare, some Leo season beautification, um, everyone's going to get a custom Lionsgate report and a copy of our book, The Astrology Advantage. So those tickets are $88 because duh, of course. And if you don't have yours yet, join us on 8-8. Um, but you can already do, I recommend already really starting to think this week in your Mercury retrograde reflections on where you might be out of alignment with your soul's purpose. Where has your work drifted off course. I read somewhere that um, a plane that's that leaves, I think, JFK 
and goes 1% off course, by the time it gets to, say it's headed to, you know, the Arctic Circle, up way up north, by the time it gets to that part of the world, that 1% out of alignment will take it all the way down to Australia, New Zealand. That's not an exact fact, so please don't come after me with that quotables, but let's just say it'll take you way far away from where you want to be, and it only starts with just drifting 1% off course. So if you think about making New Year's re resolutions and intentions, and then kind of forgetting about them drifting a little bit, you may be wildly off course from where you thought you would be. So, and that again is okay, because maybe you're supposed to go off course, but maybe it's, it's, it's not because you're supposed to be and it's simply because you need to tune back in. So this lion's gate portal to abundance and truth and your spirit is, is, is opening on August 8th. And it's a really important, exciting moment to take with the rest of the world. You know, our, our collective consciousness really does matter when you do something alone, you know, it's, it, it causes, uh, it resounds in the universe. But when you're doing something that millions of others are doing at the same time, it does create a spiritual network effect, whether you believe it or not. It does say, you know, if you imagine a bunch of people downloading an app and starting to use it, all of a sudden, like that, it, it starts to become part of the, the world's consciousness and it becomes the new normal. So what we're really out to do is make heart-centered, spirit-centered definitions of success, the new normal for everybody. So, and that's what we're doing with our book, The Astrology Advantage. I will be unapologetically and shamelessly plugging it until it comes out August 27th and beyond, because this is our purpose, our life's purpose work. We simplified the zodiac into three archetypes so that anyone can tap into the power of their birth chart. And we really hope that you'll pre-order your copy and get it with all our bonus gifts because we cannot wait to share this with you more and more. We've already had a couple of amazing webinars this summer. You can re-watch them. They're up still, I think. And... Um, to start to really tap into your success blueprint that you were born with. So, you know, that that's those are the highlights of this week. We're in Leo season. It's really a time of creativity, passion, self-discovery, and, you know, just speaking from the heart. Leo is about courage. I posted an Instagram uh, with a little ritual I did where I, I already pre-drew a circle and adorned it with some leaves. And I did a visualization. I recommend this. If this is if you like to do rituals, um, I invite you to try this. So I drew a circle. I took a stick and I drew it in the dirt in my in my garden. And I imagined uh, stepping into my future self. One of my friends who did some NLP once did an exercise with the timeline. I've never done any training on it, but I remembered that you you know there's a there's something powerful that happens when you physically uh, move your body as though you're moving through time and space um, into a different phase of your life. So I drew this circle and then I just I closed my eyes and I imagined moving into my future self, who I want to be, who I'm becoming. Uh, the life I want, especially, you know, with this new book, with, with uh, this very exciting new uh, methodology that we're going to be sharing. I visualized sharing that and sharing my light and gifts with the world at levels that I haven't before. So what happens, you know, when you start to visualize yourself doing something you've never done before, it can feel a little funny, like, can I really believe that? You know, you get those feelings of, what they call imposter syndrome, or it's just, it's really, you don't have any spiritual muscle memory of it. You've never done it before. So it might not even be imposter syndrome. I think that's an overused term. It might just be that you don't, you know, your, your cells don't have any kind of 
recollection of doing this. You don't have the neural pathways. You don't even have the physical movements of what that feels like. So you're kind of making it up. It feels unbelievable and impossible. So taking that moment to visualize yourself there, occupying this version of yourself that you haven't yet lived in this lifetime. I did that. And, um, and then I stepped into the circle as a, I summoned, so, so Leo is about courage. We just had this Leo new moon. We're still feeling it. We're still in the effect of it for three days, three to five days. Some people even believe. So I, I, I summoned the courage of the Leo new moon and I took a step forward into this future self. I asked the universe to give me the resources that I need to show me the resources that I need internal and external to become that and even more to become my highest potential um, as it, as, as it's supposed to be. And, you know, I, I had my little puppy Magnolia on my arm. She came around. And then after I stepped out of it, I've, I put a crystal in and I put some leaves in it and I'm just going to leave it out there. I'm going to step in and out of it like that lion's gate portal all week long and experiment with that. When I catch myself having doubt or wanting to shrink and be small or saying, ah, oh, that's so weird. That's so crazy. Who do you think you are? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to step into it and just stand there for a moment. So um, that is my woo-woo. I shouldn't even diminish it. You know, that's something I also want to stop this week as we enter the lion's gate. I feel like, you know, the masses of people that, I've, that I meet, um, or at least a critical mass of people, let's just say, have adopted astrology and are not in any kind of an argument with the fact that we're connected to the stars and the planets. Yet we find ourselves apologizing and diminishing and calling what we do woo woo. And it's so tempting to do that, to put others at ease because likely if you're into spiritual technology of any kind, you're an empathic and sensitive person. So you, you want the other person to feel respected. You don't want them to think you're weird. You don't want there to be separation or distance between you, but then you end up diminishing something that is, that is sacred to you that has really helped you maybe more than anything ever has before, or it's up there pretty high. So I think and I hope that, you know, this Lion's Gate portal of 2024 is our moment to come out of the spiritual closet. You know, I think jokingly thinking of Narnia and the literal closet that people, that the kids in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe step through to get to Narnia, to get to this quantum realm. I mean, that's what we're doing. This is the week of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, I mean, hey, I'll be the witch because we've got the lion and we're going to have the wardrobe with our <laughs> with uh, with Mercury and Venus meeting up and the, creating a stylish moment. So let's make this the week of the lion, the witch and the wardrobe and own your witchiness. Also a word that, you know, is silly and diminishing, too. But, you know, some people love it and some people own it. I, I do, but I just, you know. Can we just normalize that spiritual technology helps people, that there are other dimensions that, you know, we as a as a human, as a human culture only know a speck of the knowledge that there is to know. We find that humility during Leo season. You know, Leo has Leo's shadow side is ego and arrogance, but Leo at its highest expression is this beautiful, divine, noble, regal humility. So can we tap into that this week with this, you know, Mercury and now Venus and Virgo, which is a sign of service and is one of the most humble signs and really occupy and move from the space of our hearts and togetherness and mutual respect for each other. It's it's not easy to do. This it's, it's so tempting to sling mud and, you know, let a snarky barb fly. I, I love my sarcastic sense of humor and, you know, I'll never fully put it on ice, that's for sure. But, you know, is it helpful? Is it true? Is it kind? 
the Hippocratic Oath of Doing No Harm might be a good one to follow for Mercury retrograde and beyond. Okay, so wishing you a smooth start to the week. Hope to see you with us in our Lion's Gate workshop. If you can make it, it's on August 8th, 7 to 9 p.m. And you'll be able to, it's live online, so you'll be able to ask us questions. We're going to do little rituals all throughout. San Symes, our breathwork, ancestral breathwork expert, is going to do a heart-opening breathwork uh, ritual to start us off. And it's just going to be pure joy, pure unconditional love like every event we have. Wishing you an awesome, awesome week and see ya next week. As always, thanks for listening. You can discover more of your star power at astrocell.com and be sure to follow us on social at Astro Twins. Thanks to Camellia J for the music for this podcast. Join us next time for more cosmic fun.